Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and our New Year 7 students, if you're joining us now with mums and dads, it's great to have you with us for this orientation evening for new families to Caroline Chisholm and those entering Year 7 next year. Um, for those of you joining us on Zoom or on Facebook, it's great to have you along. Um, my name is Dr. Greg Elliott. I am the principal of Caroline Chisholm College, and I'm joined here by Ms. Charmaine Rossetto, who is the Year 7 Leader of Learning for next year, and Mr. Greg King, who is the Assistant Principal Wellbeing. I'm really sorry that you can't be with us here in person in these beautiful facilities so that we could speak to you directly about um, our plans for next year and the transition for your daughters into Year 7. Uh, but it's great to have you along in this uh, virtual situation anyway. Uh, we would invite you during the presentation to engage with us by asking questions and making comments, um, either if you're joining us on Facebook, just use the comments um, under this Facebook post, or if you're using Zoom with us this evening, you can use the question and answer um, function or chat function that you'll see in the Zoom interface. And we'll try and answer as many of those questions as we can, either during the presentation tonight, if we have an opportunity, or we will get back to um, all year seven parents with the uh, frequently asked questions uh, you could say. So it's great tonight to, um, to be joined by um, Charmaine and by Greg, and I'm going to ask uh, Charmaine now to lead us in an acknowledgement of country. Thanks, Charmaine. Okay. I would like to acknowledge that this school is on the land of the Mabala Ten of the Darug Nation. We recognise that the Darug people are the traditional custodians of this land. I would also like to pay respect to the elders both past and present of the Darug Nation and extend that respect to other Indigenous Australians who are present. Thank you, Charmaine. And last week we celebrated a wonderful NAIDOC week uh, with our Aboriginal students in particular leading the way and all of us celebrating Aboriginal culture, which is such an important part of our culture at Caroline Chisholm, uh, which always was and always will be um, a direct place. So the agenda for this evening, we don't expect you to read that off the screen behind us. We hope to um, cover the main questions that you might have about uh, your daughter entering year seven. Um, and we will also be hearing from a current year seven student and her dad a little bit later uh, in the presentation. And then um, Ms. Rosetta will be talking to us about our particular plans for next year. And you may wanna have pen and paper ready because there's some important dates and facts that we'd like you to carry away from the presentation, um, followed by some more nuts and bolts from, um, from Mr. King, which should finish us up. We'll be done in well under an hour. If you um, are at home waiting to serve dinner or whatever, we won't be keeping you uh, too long tonight. So let's get straight into it, um, shall we? I, um, have already introduced Charmaine and it's great to be able to, to share with you the news that Charmaine is the year seven leader of learning for next year. How are you feeling about that Charmaine? Very excited actually to um, be help the girls navigate their first year of high school. Yeah and we got to meet them on Tuesday. Yes they've been very excited and they um, left very happy. Hopefully they took my challenge on um, to meet a new friend mm -hmm. because I think there's 191 new girls um, that joined the sisterhood so yeah, that challenge was that they had to learn their name. Learn their name, get to meet someone new. Yeah, when I did a test at the end of the day with the girls, there were some of our students who had memorised five, six, seven names of new people um, to remember for next year. And they got to meet the school captains and the um, leaders of the committees. And there are a few challenges on that day. I bet they came home full of stories. So we look forward to seeing them at the beginning of next year. And uh, we have apologies uh, tonight from Mr. Crozza. Yeah, so he'll um, be our assistant. He will also help support the girls during class school with the, also the team that we have with the Year 7 Heritage. Yeah, so we put a whole team together to support our Year 7 students, made up of Mrs Rosetta, who's, who's in charge, obviously, and Mr Carozza, and then the homeroom teachers who play a big role in the girls' lives. They see their homeroom teacher each morning and their coal teacher, their connected learning teacher, who they spend 19 periods a fortnight with for English, religion, history, and geography. And so you'll certainly be getting to know those names very early on in your daughter's Chisholm journey. Okay, so um, Mr. King, your leader of wellbeing, assistant principal wellbeing, do you want mind telling our parents what that involves? We um, have two assistant principals. Um, we divide our role with big overlap as well, but we divide our roles between learning and well-being. So we have a team of people, as you mentioned, we have the leader of learning and we have the homeroom teachers, and our focus there is on making sure this is a place where students are safe and where they can engage in the learning without distractions, mm -hmm. and a place where they hopefully will make new friends and come out with 
as what Bonga does. So our wellbeing programs really focus on strengths, don't they? Yes, as well as that, we actually have a program that we look at in pastoral care, and we have a big focus on identifying strengths. That's an exercise that the students go through each year, and sort of believe that strengths remain the same. And the strengths that they identify can be the ones that they then build on and work on as they move through their through their year, particularly in terms of setting of goals and things of that nature. Sure. So Shamane will be starting the year by identifying some of the girls' strengths, won't we, with the strength survey? Yeah, and then we'll see those strengths in action on the Year 7 camp, but we'll talk about that um, a little bit later. Okay, so um, tonight I would like to challenge you, you can see the image on the screen behind me, that there are a couple of big takeaways, um, excuse the pun, I'm just thinking about coffee, it's been a long day, um, that we would like you to take away with you um, after tonight's presentation four really big ideas that um, I would like to put to you to frame your thinking about your daughter uh, beginning high school. And they are that high school's changed a lot since we went to school. Uh, you're probably of a similar generation to me, probably a bit younger. Um, and that the way that high school is now is not like the way that it was. Um, that learning isn't a comfortable process sometimes and that growth and challenge is sometimes uncomfortable. The third takeaway is that every day counts and having good attendance is critical for success in high school. And finally, that you have all chosen a Catholic school for your daughter's education. Whether your family is Catholic or not, that's a deliberate decision that you've made. And I'd like to share with you why I think that's a great decision. So let's start with takeaway number one, that high school's changed a lot. This is a, a photograph that could be my primary school or my high school classroom. Um, that's probably me up the back without my hand in the air. I wasn't the best student when I was at school. But we, um, we, when we went to school, we'd face the front in nice, neat rows. The room that we're coming to you from tonight is one of our classrooms. I know it looks a little bit like a TV studio tonight, um, but the room is a, a very agile and creative space. And this would usually be occupied by two teachers and a class. I think you teach in these spaces sometimes, don't you, Charmaine? How do you find working in a space like this? Oh, I actually love it. The girls have really taken on the challenge of a different uh, learning environment. Mm -hmm. So um, having all the boards around, they get up and move around and they get to work collaboratively with each other. Yeah, so we, we focus a lot in these sorts of spaces on problem solving and design thinking and really challenging the students not to just receive information passively, but to, to be actively engaged in their own learning. And so um, the new school, which we opened only this year and sadly haven't been able to share it yet because of COVID, has been designed to put students at the centre of the learning and make sure that, that these spaces support them to work either individually or in teams to have a great problem solving um, approach to their learning. And that's been working really well this year. And we're hoping that we'll be able to invite you in next year to show you around these spaces. And you can be as excited as your daughters were when they walked through here um, last Tuesday. Um, the other thing we need to be aware of is that the way that the world is changing requires a different sort of education as well. Um, when I went to school and potentially when, when you went to school, there was a fairly clear pathway um, that went from school to further training to a particular job. And as you would be aware, the nature of employment has changed dramatically. And this year in particular, um, the prospects for youth leaving school and going into the workforce, there are great challenges there. And you can see the question on the screen be behind me. It reads, what percentage of jobs requiring maths and technological skills um, in five years time, what, what would that percentage be? And the answer is 100%. We want these girls to leave school being really capable and literate and to own their own learning. And that means being good across the curriculum. And so um, a focus, not just on maths and science, but on problem solving and collaboration. And all of those really important skills are the focus of our curriculum these days. Um, when we went to school, it was all about the marks and the grades. And um, I, I used to feel quite nervous taking my report card home to my parents back in the day. Whereas now the focus is very clearly on growth and growth over time. And so we're interested to see where a student was in her learning and then where she moves to next in her learning. Grades are still important. And this is a school with very high expectations for learning. And we don't let students off the hook at all for their learning, but we wanna see growth. We don't expect that every student will get an A grade and that at the HSC, they'll all be getting ATARs in the 90s, but we do expect that they will continually grow. And uh, we'll talk about that in the next sec. 
of um, takeaways, which is that learning isn't comfortable. And it's never been comfortable. If you think yourself about the experiences, the really important experiences of learning that you've had in your life, they've required some self-reliance. They've required you to draw on your own skills at some point. Um, I remember being taught how to ride a bike. Uh, I fell off many, many times, but there came a time where my dad let go. And in letting go, I had to wobble down the street myself. And that's not a very subtle way of speaking to our parents of New Year Sevens as a metaphor for next year. There comes a point where you have to let go a little bit and let your daughter wobble down the road. And yes, she might fall off and graze a knee, but that's the only way that we can learn. No one ever learned anything unless they stood on the edge of something they couldn't do. And so as we prepare these students for a future that will be quite challenging and demanding for them, we expect that they'll be going on a journey of self-discovery, as Mr. King said earlier, discovering their strengths and their capacities and using them to the best of their abilities. And to illustrate that, I'd like to tell a story. A student was given a project and the project was to observe some nature in her own garden. And so she went out the back and she found on a tree a cocoon. And she watched this cocoon over a period of days and thought this will be the subject of my assignment for my science teacher. And then one day the cocoon started to open and she went back the next day and opened a little bit more. And then finally the cocoon was open enough that the butterfly started to emerge, but it was really struggling. And so the student thought, well, this isn't good. I'm gonna help this butterfly get out of its cocoon. And so she did. She helped the butterfly out and helped pull it out of the cocoon and it dropped to the ground and couldn't fly. And the reason it couldn't fly was because part of the process of coming out of the cocoon was that the butterfly needed to use its own muscles to spread its wings and learn how to fly for itself. And when the child interfered with that process, it actually caused the butterfly to lose that ability for itself. And so just like that other story of me learning to ride a bike, this process of entering high school is similar to that process of um, the butterfly coming out of the cocoon. We need to allow our children, our students, to learn that process for themselves, to learn what their strengths are, to come up to the limits of their capability and then to push a little bit harder. And the metaphor that we use for that, um, which you'll hear a lot about from your daughters next year, is called the learning journey. And the learning journey for us um, frames our thinking around junior high school in particular, that our students, um, and you'll see this image when you visit the school and your daughter will bring it home in the first week, we see this learning journey um, made up of five stages. And the first stage is where the students reflect on what their strengths already are. And then the second stage is they set off on the journey together, sharing those strengths and starting that process of problem solving. Uh, working out what each other's strengths are, working out what questions they need to ask, what resources they need to draw on, and mapping out what that journey will look like. The third phase, which is perhaps the most important phase, is called the climb. And the climb is where intentionally we expect the students to struggle a little bit. We expect that the students won't have a clear path forward uh, in their learning and that there'll be a number of options um, among which they may choose, or they may not know what to do next. That's the point at which their teachers step back a little bit instead of stepping forward. Now, I'm a parent, I have three children, and in raising my children at moments like that, I was always tempted to step forward and to save and to rescue and to make sure that um, my kids were okay. But our teachers are learning at this point in particular to step back so that the students can then explore their strengths and overcome those hurdles and in doing so achieve some deep learning that will last with them uh, for a long time. Now if you think in your adult life about the things that you've had to learn and certainly as a school principal I've had to learn heaps. Charmaine you're about to learn a whole lot about being a year seven leader. Are you expecting you'll be going through a climb now and again? Definitely. Yep it's part of yeah, learning. It's part of my learning journey myself. Yeah and Mr King? Yes, even at my advanced age, still. I wasn't <laughs> going to say that. I wasn't going to say that. Okay. 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 Oh, we're just hearing from you that we can't hear Charmaine. So we'll make sure that we move it down between you and perhaps Mr. King a little bit. Thank you. So um, the, the climb is really part of that. And you'll observe your daughters do that. 
And you'll remember, I hope, what we're talking about tonight. Sure, you can reach out to us, you can speak to your daughter's teacher, and we'll support you as parents um, through that climb phase. But we're building that into learning, that that is what, what we want our um, students to graduate with, is a sense of resilience, um, a sense of self-reliance, um, that they can do it themselves. And we think that's an important part of, of growing up. Um, so that's the learning journey, and you will, be, you will be hearing more about that. And we've already mentioned the focus um, on strengths. The other thing which I don't feel very qualified um, to speak about is this notion of sisterhood. So you spoke to the girls already about that last week. What did you tell the girls at the orientation day about the sisterhood? Uh, Ashley was the captain that talked about the sisterhood for us this year. Um, when they join Caroline Chisholm, they join the rest of the cohort of the school that are already here and are part of the sisterhood, that are here to support each other, look for those strength spotting things. Mm -hmm. So um, they're not alone. No. There's a, someone here to support them either through another year group or even a teacher or things like that. So they're not, they've joined a sisterhood. So when I went to school, I was quite scared of the seniors, but that's not the case no, here, is the it? Girl, actually, the seniors all picked the girls up on orientation day at the gate. Um, so the, your daughters actually all met a senior student and they loved it. Mm. Yeah, I think that's a really special part of this community that um, the older students are keen to reach out to the younger students and make sure um, that the um, that the students have what they need uh, to make to make them comfortable and feel as though they can they can settle into high school uh, with that sense of um, belonging. I suppose we're just going to check the the microphones a little bit. Could you just check that that one is switched on? Yes, it looks like it is. And would, Need to speak really, really loud. loud. <laughs> really loud. We Sorry, hope. I apologise. <laughs> we hope that you can hear um, Charmaine and, and Greg now. But we are here to help, and your daughters are not alone. And we have a whole lot of support structures uh, in the school that support the girls, um, including, as I said earlier in my introduction, the homeroom teachers um, and the coal teachers, Charmaine and Nick Carrozza. Um, and Mr. King, the whole structure is there to support your daughters. And of course, we have a counsellor um, when uh, we need to give students particular skills for dealing with uh, particular concerns that, that they might have. So it is, um, and students report this to us, that is a very safe and protective atmosphere uh, in which to do that, that challenging learning. The third point that I need to make is with regard to attendance. And um, we have a very clear goal of attendance in the school because we know that there is a direct relationship between turning up to school and learning lots. It's very hard to learn if you're not here. And so we have an expectation that students turn up every day. In fact, that's the law. Um, our goal for attendance over the course of the year is that every girl will be here for 94% or more of the available days. And our teachers will be observing that and contacting you um, when that's not the case. So if a student was to miss a day a fortnight, that's then at 90%, which is starting to get quite serious. If it drops below 90%, then there are interventions that we need to put in place. So taking family holidays should certainly happen uh, during the um, school holiday periods only. We have four typical reasons for people not coming to school. The first one is family holidays. And I need to approve those, otherwise they appear on the report and in the official record as unapproved leave. So I can approve short um, holidays if it's essential that that happens during school time, although usually it's not essential, it needs to take place during school holidays. The second one is for sporting commitments. And um, if your daughter is an elite athlete, then we will always approve that leave so that she can participate in elite sports and you'd communicate in advance with the school about that. Sometimes students just um, have a bad day and don't wanna to come to school. Let me tell you very clearly that that is the worst reason for allowing your daughter to stay at home. The day you give your daughter permission to stay home for that reason is the day you give her permission to ask for that every other day. And it becomes a very serious pattern for some students. So we'd ask you to resist and to work with us to support good attendance. And if she sleeps in, well, that's just too bad. That's not acceptable at all. And um, the girls need to be up and ready for school. Uh, if, even if they're coming by bus, they need to get themselves organized. This is high school now. We expect a high degree of uh, independence to make sure that they're doing what they need to do and getting themselves here to school. 
And of course, there is the legitimate reason of being ill. And we do not want your daughter um, at school if she's not well. Uh, we've learned that very clearly this year, that spreading germs is a bad idea. So keep her home if she's sick. And for those other four reasons, think very, very carefully um, about her not coming to school because we would say that, see that as a serious issue um, that we need to talk about. So please um, support us and your daughters um, by ensuring good attendance. The fourth area that I just want to address quickly is that this is a Catholic school. And if you are not Catholic, you are so welcome here. And as part of this community, this is a choice that you have made and your daughter will never be excluded um, if she is from a different religious background, Christian, non-Christian or otherwise, um, there is a place for her here. So that what that means in the broadest of terms is that we have a worldview um, that is based on our understanding that God loves us so much that he gave his son, Jesus Christ, as our example and model, and that we model our lives on the life of Jesus. And we understand through the stories in the Bible that there is a pattern for the way that we can live by understanding Jesus as the son of God. And um, by following that example, we live what we would call Christian lives. And they are probably modeled on the same values that you have in your families, whether you are Catholic, Christian or not. Um, that we trust that there is uh, God's plan for us and that we live a life based on love and that love is expressed through charity, through mercy and compassion and through our school values of faith, courage, tolerance, justice, dignity and compassion. So it's not that hard at the end of the day to live uh, a life that is, that is informed by the gospel. Um, it means that during the school day, uh, we have a, a pattern to our days uh, that is marked by prayer in homeroom in the morning and at year assemblies. And we stop in the middle of the day as well, just before lunch, uh, to give thanks to God and to uh, remember Caroline Chisholm as our patron and to thank God for her and to just frame our day in that, um, in that sense of being wrapped in God's love. It's a very positive outlook on life. Um, and whether your daughter is a Catholic, Christian or another faith, I'm sure she'll find that it's a very comfortable way of um, being a Chisholm girl. So they're the four takeaways for you this, this evening, um, that high school's changed, uh, that we want the do your daughters to learn, but sometimes it'll be uncomfortable, that attendance every day is vital, and that you have made a deliberate choice for a Catholic education, and we're proud to share that with you. And so that's what we mean when we talk about working in partnership with you as parents. So this is what we are committing to you, that we will get to know your daughters, um, we will listen to your concerns, and that we'll respond to your emails and calls in a timely manner. That usually means 24 hours or so, and that we'll follow the school policies that are published on our website. If there are concerns, we need to know about them sooner, and the sooner we know about them, the more easily we can resolve them. What we ask of you is that you keep yourself informed about what's going on at the college. And you'll hear a bit more about how to do that a little bit later. You'll tell us early if there is a concern and that you'll be familiar with our policies so that we'll never have to have arguments about school uniform or punctuality or any of those things. And of course, to support us with those expectations and rules so that your daughter knows that we're all on the same team. So we are looking forward to, to working with you uh, in those areas. We see you as partners and that's a, a genuine um, expression of how we want this relationship to work. So, um, as I said before, there's a whole range of supports available to you. Generally, when you're contacting the school, the, the best thing to do is to speak to your daughter's classroom teacher if it's a curriculum issue, or to her homeroom teacher if it's an issue outside of the classroom, and then they can make the best decision about who else needs to come in uh, to support your daughter as a team. All right, um, I've talked for a long time now, and thank you for your patience listening to me. Um, I'm going to hand over to Charmaine now. Um, oh, sorry, no, we've got some special guests first, I'm sorry. Um, we have Alastair Rathbone. If I can invite you now, Alastair, to turn on your camera and your microphone. Alastair is a parent of a year seven student, Madison, and so Madison is with us as well. Hello, Maddie. Um, we are going to um, just make sure that everyone can see you right now. I think everyone can see you now. Is, is that right, Nikki? Everyone can see Maddie and Alistair? Okay, 
First of all, I want to say thank you um, to Maddie and Alastair. Maddie's in year seven and Alastair is one of our, our new dads this year. And um, Maddie, I'm going to hand over to you and your dad now to tell us what your experience has been like um, being a Caroline Chisholm student. And if you can speak up nice and loud, please. Thank you, Dr. Elliot. And it's great to be part of such an interesting meeting. I remember sitting there around 12 uh, months ago myself and thinking, oh no, what have we got ourselves into? We've got our little daughter going to high school. Can we possibly see her through to the end of year seven? Well, here we are 12 months later, and I'm gonna tell you a bit of a story about how I've seen her flourish over the last um, 12 months. For me, it's been interesting watching her. She started, as I said, 12, uh, 12 years ago, our little baby daughter, and I thought to myself, what a wonderful little addition to the world. Since then, we've seen her stumble and bump through primary school and through preschool, primary school, and then into an area where we thought, oh dear, this one's really going to find it hard getting into high school. Uh, we, we watched her, I guess, grow and support a mum who hasn't been particularly well. We've seen her really pick up her game in terms of trying to get her work done, but there was always that, I guess, a doubt. Can she make it in year seven? Well, I'm sitting here today next to this lady in a uniform affirming that she has made it. She's really done a great job. We've seen the school support her. We've seen so many of those qualities that the school talks about, about, about dedication, self-motivation. We've seen her become a confident young lady. We've seen some real discipline in her, especially during the times of working from home where I'd get up in the morning and she'd be hard at it at the books. And she'd come to me at 11 o'clock sometimes and say, Dad, can I have a break? But always she's been very diligent with her work. And that's been absolutely a delight for a mother and I to, to look and see. On the softer side of Madison, I would have to say we've seen an understanding that's come from her, a deep understanding of others, a caring that's, that's evolved. And, and we're pleased to see that. And we've also seen a real, I guess, a spirit of uh, wanting to help others. So that's been her her, I guess her character traits. And I would credit the school 100% for this. They have taken uh, what we think was a little girl at the start and really helped, um, helped work with her through a couple of issues and made her into the type of young lady she is today. So I'm gonna to throw to her now. And I think she's got a little bit of a, a, a little bit of a speech or a hand, some handwritten notes, but she's gonna talk more specifically about the year that we've had and the year that she's had. And she's been a blessing. Thanks. First of all, I would like to say good evening to all the future um, Year 7 parents of 2021. Year 7 was and continues to be a great experience. I still remember I started off my year on the 29th of February. Um, I was greeted at the gate by Dr Elliot, our former principal, sorry, our principal, and um, and I entered what I thought was the biggest, scariest school of my life. I remember my heart was racing because I was very nervous and there were a lot of big people. And as Dr. Elliot said, we are, we, um, year seven was, we were small fish in a big ocean talking about, I guess, all of the other students, but um, mm -hmm. um, small, small fish in a big ocean, you soon became part of the part of the um, in the pond, didn't you working with people? Yeah. And, yeah. Um, what happened then in the middle of the year? How did you think things went after COVID um, and working well, from home? We really once in the start of term two, COVID hit Australia and mm. we began to embark in a journey of remote learning. Mm. Well, at the start of this, I was struggling a tiny bit, um, but the teachers, all my peers, um, Dr. Elliot especially helped me through this and you found it. Yeah, I found the, it very difficult. Yeah, the, mm. we had Zoom meetings and 
But then we figured out a system where I've learned that organisation is key in mm. high school and that I know that your daughters will definitely need some sort of organisation mm. to help them through the year. Um, no more winging it, Yeah, eh? <laughs> you can't really wing it. I've learned that the hard way. You can't really wing high no. school. You've always got to extend yourself in work. Um, um, I've noticed that it's a big step up from primary school. Yes. You you have a lot more teachers. Um, right now I have about nine teachers and I've known them since the start of the year. They've all supported me through thick and thin and it's some experience being in year seven. It's very fun, very, um, it's difficult at first, but you get the hang of it and mm. then you power through. You do. Which yeah. I found was a bit nerve wracking and still continues to be. Even I noticed that when you extend your learning, you get noticed a lot more, particularly mm. with this school. You get noticed, you get, um, you get, if you do something good, you will get a merit. Mm. Then you have bronze, silver, gold awards. And then you build up and then you make, it makes you feel better about yourself mm. and you realise that you can do this. Um, yep. Mm. Now that I am in term four and ready to be, to begin year eight, um, the most memorable part yeah it was the most memorable part of my high school year and it will continue to be the most memorable part of my high school journey hmm. um and iris and i um the support that i received from the school my teachers and miss peters my current year support year leader leader hmm. of learning um you will have your daughters um will have your own um it was undescribable. They were really nice and they continue to be. And I'm pretty sure that your daughters will receive as much at support as my family and I did. Thank you. Thank you. Maddie and Alistair, thank you so, so much for sharing your story with us. And Maddie, your passion for your learning is just really inspirational. Uh, Mrs. Rosetto and Mr. King and I are here just cheering you on because of how powerfully you spoke about your experience this year. So Alistair, you must be very proud of Maddie. Oh yes, oh yes. <laughs> Can't <laughs> believe what we've got here. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just wonderful. And thank you so much for sharing your journey uh, with you. us tonight. And uh, all the very best. We'll see you at school tomorrow, Maddie. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, wasn't, wasn't that inspirational? Thank you to Alistair and Maddie again. Um, we've had two questions just um, while Maddie and um, Alistair were speaking. They were, they were both from Erin. The first question was, what if I can't do an assignment? Because I know we're speaking about the challenge and the climb and that we step back when things get tough. We won't let any students sink. In fact, one of the things that we pride ourselves on at the college is that we don't let students fall through the cracks. And there is support. We have a learning support team. Um, we have teachers' aides in the classroom very often, and it's the teacher's job to get to know the strengths and the challenges of every student. So we'll never let learning get to the point where a student feels as though they just can't do it. That support will definitely be there. And the second question, again from Erin, was what if I get lost um, trying to find my way around the school or the office? And that's a very, very common question from our beginning students. And as we were saying before, how many helpers have we got? About a thousand. Pass all the seniors, they'll point you in the right direction. Absolutely. Um, so there are so many people to ask for directions and um, you'll be just like another 191 students who don't quite know their way around this big school. So you'll be fine. And getting lost in the first couple of days is to be expected. And um, year sevens don't get in trouble for much in the first little while, do they? You can't really hold them responsible for not knowing their way around. Well, I'm going to hand over to you now for a little bit, um, Charmaine. So we've talked about some of the um, some of the things that we can look forward to in Year Seven. And thanks, Mr. King, you're doing the slides now. Um, this is the uh, the motto I've chosen for your boys for next year. I introduced it last week to the uh, during their orientation. So it's be fearless, be you. Louder. Okay, sorry. Um, so why did I choose this one? I chose be fearless. So I want your daughters and I encourage your daughters uh, to step outside their comfort zone and try new experiences. 
like Maddie said, take on all those challenges at high school uh, with the dramatic changes that it is for them. Encourage them to take all the opportunities that come their way and that they encounter from day to day. Uh, we're here to help grow and support them. And with your support, hopefully together, uh, we can help them develop into very confident, independent young ladies. So that's my be fearless. And like Maddie said, like she was quite daunted when she came here that first day. And I'm sure your daughters are going to feel exactly the same, but we really do want them to be fearless and take on the challenges of high school. And, and Charmaine, do you think parents need to be fearless oh, a bit too? Oh, definitely be fearless. We have your daughters and we'll take care of them. Um, they're in a very supportive, nurturing environment here at Caroline Chisholm. Uh, there's nothing to be afraid of. I don't think I need to use any more letting go metaphors, do no, I? No, no. We will take care of them. And we're here to support them through any troubles that they have. Um, and then the BU. So your daughters have, have very unique talents and gifts that we want to embrace with that uniqueness that each one of them has. Um, and we'll embrace those gifts and talents that the girls have and help them develop on those um, gifts and talents, hopefully through our experience that they get to have here. I think that's one of the, if you don't mind me interrupting, that's one of the really special things about an all girls school that, I mean, I've, you've worked in, in all, good, boys. all boys. <laughs> I've worked in co-ed schools and I've worked in a, a lot of all girls schools. And what I find is, is really special about the all girl environment is that the students get to be themselves. They don't have to pretend to be somebody that they're not and they don't have to act for anyone. Yeah, so it's they a, don't have to fit into any other group or that, just be themselves. No, they can be absolutely themselves. And it's also okay to be a little bit weird here too. I mean, Mr. King and I talk about this because we're, we're a bit weird ourselves. <laughs> um, but it doesn't matter what your daughter is like, there is a place for her here. And it's a big school, so she'll find her tribe. Yeah. She'll find someone who's a little bit like her and um, it's it's okay. Yeah, so it's that okay. uniqueness is to be embraced. Yeah. The only thing I'd add to that is she may not find that tribe on the first day. No. Nope. That's part of the journey too. Yeah, she may not find that tribe to year nine or, or year 10. Um, but being herself, this is the safest place for her to be herself. Yeah. What a great, what a great motto! Thanks for coming up with, with that one. You'll probably hear it from time to time next yeah. year. Um, so now I'll suggest maybe get a pen and like all get your phone out because we've got some important dates and some things that we would like you to record. So um, day one next year will be on Thursday, the twenty eighth of January. So can you write that in your diaries, please? Uh, they are to arrive by 8.15 a.m. in the cola, and the girls know what the cola is. That's where we met last um, Tuesday on our orientation day. They've come in their full school uniform, ready to embrace the journey of year seven. And the, um, the day will be, we'll have two periods in what is called a homeroom. So the girls practice this on orientation day. They'll get to meet their homeroom teacher and the girls that, that um, will be doing whole this during that time. And then it's period three and four is learning as per their timetable, which they'll get on that morning. So for those two periods, I suggest they just bring a pen, a paper, stationery, and their device for the day. Uh, the teachers know that they don't have too much stuff and we'll have things prepared for them on the day. So don't be too daunted that they're learning on the first day. It's more a get to know you, get to know how the school runs. So in terms of packing the bag, we've had girls who've turned up on the first day carrying enough to um, conquer Everest. Just pen, paper and their device. And, a, and lunch and morning lunch, tea and yeah. a bottle of water. Yeah, there is canteen available though. Yes. There is canteen. <laughs> um, year five will be peer support. So peer support here is our year 10 cohort. We'll um, do a few activities for the girls to get them more comfortable with the school. And then period six, we're doing BAS practice, which we'll deal with again a bit yeah. later in the presentation tonight. And that's day one. And hopefully they come home to you happy and tired. <laughs> <laughs> and they've enjoyed their first day of many at Caroline Chisholm. And then they've got to come back the next day, right? And then the next day, <laughs> Friday. Uh, Friday's timetable is very similar. Yeah, too far. Um, so Friday's timetable, again, we run with first two periods of homeroom. So back with their cold teacher, really getting to know each other and their cold teacher or homeroom teacher. And then period three to five is learning as their timetable, which they will know from the day before. Um, and then period six again is just that bus practice or the um, pickup practice. And then some very early dates that we have next year and some activities that to look forward to. We'll have a welcome barbecue for the families 
just to get to know uh, the staff and the school, which is the 12th of February. So we're planning for those to go ahead as normal. We're hoping that um, by the 12th of February, the COVID restrictions that apply to schools will be relaxed. So we'll keep praying that, that um, our country remains safe and well. Yeah. Uh, then we have Year 7 camp, which I think is week four, if I got the dates. It's week four, the 15th to the 17th, which is a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The girls then do have to come back to school on a Thursday. Um, so try to get them to bed early. <laughs> Uh, and then we have Carolyn Chisholm Day, which is a very um, fun community day on the 26th of February. So some really good things to look forward to for our first term together. Fantastic. Okay. Um, now we really want you to stay informed. So um, how can our parents do that? Uh, we've got two social media apps that are going actually on now. So your Facebook, if you're on the Facebook Live one, and follow us on Twitter. And then very important app that we would like you to download is... The school bag app so please go on to the your device and download this app all notes newsletters and um, invitations to things are sent via that school app so basically if you don't download the school bag app onto your phone you will not receive any communication from the school because that is the channel through which it all comes um, now i know that in the setup for orientation day and even for tonight a lot of parents called the school and said when's orientation day when's the information evening and what's the first day of school next year? What does my daughter need to bring? And when our office staff said to those parents, have you been receiving the updates on our school bag app? They've said, no, we didn't download it. So you will find yourself in a very difficult position if you haven't downloaded the app. Although I imagine if you're joining us tonight, it's because you found the link in the app. So maybe we are preaching to the converted. And just um, while we're talking about connecting with the school, if you would like to connect with the school professionally through LinkedIn, um, we'd encourage you to do that as well. Um, we have a full-time partnerships manager at the school, uh, Nikki Alsengeist, who is always looking for business connections that may be able to enhance the learning for our students. So uh, we are present on LinkedIn and active on LinkedIn, thanks to Nikki. And so if you look for us on LinkedIn and connect your business to ours, um, that would be a great way of us getting to know you as well. So there are plenty of ways of finding out what's going on in the school. We don't have a newsletter per se. We um, realize that all of our news, um, if we wait two weeks for a newsletter, is kind of out of date. And so we push all our stories out through Facebook on the day that it happens generally. And if you've been following our Facebook page, click like on Facebook, you'll be getting those updates of what's going on in the school. If you're lucky enough to see a, a picture of your daughter doing something exciting in her learning or tending to the animals in the farm or engaged in an active PE lesson or whatever, you'll see those um, on Facebook each day. And then each week, we send out a very brief um, need to know newsletter that just has the announcements in it. Um, and so you can have a quick snapshot of the announcements that you need for what's coming up uh, in our school calendar and items that um, the school really needs to let you know about. So that's, um, that's our way of keeping you informed. Okay, so I think we're handing over to Mr. King um, now who has some more details that it would be very wise to pay attention to because these are the questions we get just before school comes back in January next year. Mr. King. Thank you. They also tend to be honest to be a little bit more boring, but there's some really important nuts and bolts for that to make that start of the year as smooth as possibly can. Uh, the first one is just in relation to buses, and this applies to a lot of students. The majority of our students uh, catch buses to and from school. Um, obviously, a number of walk and some other stuff picked up, but there are a lot of students who catch buses, and a lot of these certain students will be catching those buses. So just a few points about that. Um, first, it's really important that your daughters know what buses they're going to be catching. Uh, we have had situations where the students arrive on the first day and are catching buses home and they don't know or they've forgotten what bus they have to catch. So I would ask you to make sure you know uh, what you have to catch. So firstly, check the bus routes for your daughter um, and that needs to be done before they arrive on the first day. Most of our buses, nearly all of them, uh, are from busways, except the one that's the, the one bus that services the Emmy Plains area, that's the Blue Mountains Bus Company. All the other ones are from busways. And what you would do is to go onto their websites. They all have, and you're, you're not too hard to find, follow the links until you find the school timetables. Um, they're not the easiest uh, the things to work through. They don't have maps, they have timetables, and they have streets and where the turns are and so on. So you'll, you'll sort of work out where the, they are near you. That was actually in your cap. 
that was in oh, the pack two. Oh, in the pack two. So, that, yeah. so we have a pack that, that, that yeah. haven't changed since then. I would just say about that as, as well, Greg, that um, you can't really expect the school to find which bus your daughter needs to catch. I had a student come up to me last Tuesday, one of your New Year Sevens, to say, Dr. Elliot, I live in 14 Crane Street. What bus should I catch? Um, it doesn't work that way. You're going to have to find that out by accessing the websites or looking at the information we sent home in the pack. Having said that, we do have some, some file safe um, things. But, no one has been left uh, stranded at school yet. Uh, um, so, what I suggest you do is to write down the number of the morning and afternoon buses, which are different numbers. So, the, the two routes, morning and afternoon, are different numbers. And check that your daughter knows which stop to get off. That's probably the most important one, obviously, coming here, they all, all get off at school. But in the afternoon, um, she needs to, particularly if she's not uh, caught buses a lot, make sure that she knows exactly where to get off. Um, possibly if there's an older friend who may be at the college, then that can be arranged as well. Um, but, but it's really important to have that information beforehand. Um, as I said, we to check the time table. Um, Ms. Rosetta mentioned about the uh, practice for buses. So we, we do that at the beginning. And what we do on the first day, we spend quite a bit of time organising year sevens. We have a bus prefect, the senior, year 10 and year 11, well, that will be year 11 as well, students at that stage. We have a bus prefect, two bus prefects on each route. Um, most of that, I do a lot, but certainly at the beginning, they will have an important responsibility in making sure your daughter get on their bus and that they're getting the right bus. So we have lines, we have a, it's quite a modernised process and the students will walk down the first, for the first week, they will be walking down uh, at the front with their bus prefect and they want the chance to get on the buses and they will be organised. After the first week, um, this has been out, by that stage the students are quite comfortable with knowing which bus to get and how to get it and essentially they wait in the hole while their buses are called. This will all be explained to them on the first day but alongside working with the bus prefects, knowing who's catching their bus, um, within a couple of days we'll get them on there fairly quickly. But as I said, the most important thing from my experience is that they know the number of their buses beforehand and I would suggest you write that down or they have it on their phone or they have somewhere where they can access it so that they can remember. Um, just have a few information points about the uniform and I suppose the first point is to just acknowledge that we are a uniform school and it's a very strong community expectation that the uniform is worn correctly so we would expect while students are coming to and from school and while they're at school they are, they are conforming to the expectations of this community and uh, the parents who send their students here. Um, detailed information about that I think you will probably have that already but certainly can be found on the college website. The final point about uniform, please label everything. You would not believe the amount of lost property that turns up in the, the student office every day and reasonably expensive items, but that labels on. If they're labeled, they get back to the student within the day, probably within the hour. But we have so much equipment that gets handed in and obviously not just uniforms, but drink bottles, all sorts of things. Um, it's really important that you put a label on those because if things are labeled, this is but kids are so honest and they are always handing in things they find. So things don't go missing, they just don't get returned because we don't have labels. So it's a small thing, but it'll make life a lot easier. Um, in terms of uniform, I would like to just um, mention the point about shoes. And I don't want to labor, labor this too much, but it's just that it's an expensive purchase. So it's really important that you do purchase the correct ones to start with. Um, to begin with, the shoes um, need to be particular uh, requirements. And this is, apart from the uniform, there are WHS requirements. The students will now be in situations um, that require some safety, their technology class, their science classes, things which are a bit different from primary school. So that means the shoes must be firstly black leather, lace up, polishable, and they must cover the top of the foot. They need to have heels or molded shoes, not flats. And they must be of a reasonable height, let's say no more than about three centimetres. And finally, they must be lace up and not slip on. Um, there's a couple of other points about the shoes. Uh, I've got a couple of little illustrations there. So the top one is what they need to be. Uh, the bottom illustration are the things they can't be, which are the Mary Jane style, as I understand, being an expert. Um, the soft shoes and also the ones on the right there, they're converse and they can't be that either. So we can't have any gym style converses, even if they're black leather. So I suggest you please check carefully before buying. 
they are available in the local um, shoe stores. Please make sure you get the right ones because if they don't, they will be asked to buy another pair of shoes with, with the WHS requirements. Finally, in terms of shoes, sports shoes can be any color, but they must be designed for sport use and not fashion. So that would include things like Vans or Converse's, but they need to be sports shoes designed for playing sport in. Okay, um, we're going to just have a quick chat, a uh, very quick chat about technology, um, because as you would be aware from the pack that was sent home to families, every student at Caroline Chisholm brings with them um, a laptop computer, and the specifications for that uh, computer can be found um, on the school website. Um, any Apple product is fine, as well as a whole range of um, other products from um, HP and other vendors. So it's just important that you check the website if you're going to make a purchase, or if you're giving some specifications to Santa for Christmas, make sure that Santa has um, a copy of our specifications so that his elves can build um, the right sort of computer for your daughter. And um, in terms of that, we would like to support you in setting up that computer for school. And so later this week, um, you'll be receiving an email from our IT manager, um, Matthew Beattie, who does a wonderful job running IT in the school. And that will, involve, that will include information about booking an appointment to come in with your daughter to have those devices set up on our school network. I um, just mentioned before, before we get to that, that's on our slide as well. Just um, in, in about the spend minimum specifications, go to the college website, you'll see this pull down menu there uh, under enrollment, it's a B BYOD program. That's where you'll find the information. I suppose the initials BYOD don't necessarily mean much to people device. bring your own device um, so check that out mr Beatty will send you information this week inviting you to um, a 10 minute setup session um, and that puts your daughter's computer onto our network so that she receives all the, um, the safety and filtering um, support that she needs while she's here at school the computers are not um, filtered when they're at home in your house that's a matter for you and your family to manage but when they're here at school they are very strictly um, filtered and monitored. Um, so just be aware of that if this is the first time that your daughter has had a computer, um, that you would need to come up with some arrangements in your family to keep your daughter safe. Uh, generally, uh, in the junior school, uh, parents make rules such as a set amount of time when girls use their devices and not having their devices in their bedrooms um, is a pretty good rule for year seven, eight and nine, I would suggest. Wouldn't you agree, Charmaine? Agree. <laughs> Because, um, yes, they need to learn how to use them responsibly first, I think. Okay. Um, I think that brings us just about to the end. So um, we have received some questions online, and uh, Nikki has been answering those in the background. So thank you to Nikki, our Partnerships Manager, for coming along tonight and keeping the lights running. Um, and if you do have other questions, then please contact us. We love answering your questions. It usually saves us work down the track. Uh, for when there's some confusion or some misunderstanding. So please reach out to us. We are here uh, to support you. And just like you, we want your daughter's transition to high school to be as joyful as Maddie's was um, so that she can experience the sort of um, the high school first day and first year that Maddie has been experiencing. That's what we're hoping and praying for your daughter. So um, thank you, Greg, for joining us tonight. Good luck to Charmaine as our Year 7 Leader of Learning for 2021. I hope you've had a, a sense tonight um, of being welcomed into the community, even though you are there at your home looking at your TV or your computer or your phone and we're here. Uh, we really want you to feel as though you're a part of this uh, Chisholm family because it's a really special family and this is going to be a very special journey for us together as partners. Thanks once again. Good night and God bless.